Hello everyone, I wanted to make a, a sermon video today. Um, I talked this on uh, Sunday night, the 11th of October at Meridianville, and I wanted to share it with you out there. Um, yeah, I'm going to be in the book of Philemon. I think that last night might have been the first time I uh, ever ever preached that and I might have heard it preached one time but anyway uh, I'm in Philemon the first in the King James Version of the Bible and it says Paul a prisoner of Jesus Christ and Timothy our brother and to Philemon our de dearly beloved and fellow laborer and to our beloved Appia and Archippus our fellow soldier and to the church in thy house Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God making mention of thee always in my prayers. Hearing of the, thy love and faith which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus and towards all saints, that the communication of thy faith may be effectual, become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Uh, I, I'm reading a little bit more than usual. This is going to be 25 verses. And it says, For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ and join thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, or Onesimus, however you want to pronounce him, which I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again, that thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he may have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel, but without thy mind would I do nothing that thy benefit should be as it were of necessity, should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he should have departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a beloved, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. That thou count me therefore a partner, receive him, as myself. If he have wronged thee or owed thee aught, put that on my account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it, albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But with, with all, prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I may be given unto you. There salute the Ephesus, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my beloved laborers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Demas, I think he... He finally left Paul, but uh, I want to read, I want to talk about this today. Uh, Philemon was a son to Paul, much like Timothy was, uh, but but without the spotlight. You know, uh, Paul wrote letters, you know, to, to churches, Colossians, uh, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, etc., but this time he's not writing to a church, he's writing to a man, Philemon. And that's what the book is named after. And and, uh, and it was important enough that Paul thought enough in his old age to write to him in his situation. Philemon must have had some money. I mean, he owned uh, Onesimus, that ran, Onesimus that ran away. Uh, so that showed the level of wealth. He's probably a man of uh, fair importance. Uh, 
like I said, it doesn't deal with the usual doctrine that Paul deals with in his letters. Uh, Paul is a prisoner outwardly. He's jailed. But inside, inwardly, he is free. He's, uh, he's writing to a slave owner, trying to get him to uh, receive a runaway slave. Paul's bound on the outside, but free on the inside. And Philemon is bound on the inside and free on the outside. And Paul is telling Philemon, the, the man that was once your slave is now my son. Now, Philemon, uh, you're in Timothy's my sons. You're my son, Philemon. And now Onesimus is my son. And now if he is my son, then he's your brother. And if he's your brother, then he can't be your slave. So it's kind of like a little love letter uh, trying to get Philemon to love Onesimus like he should be loved. And to some degree, we're all running away from something. Uh, maybe not the same, same way or the same thing, but we've all got something that we... Um, your past or how people view you or something. And P Paul is telling Philemon, I, I believe he's more profitable to you now, Philemon, than he was before. Uh, Paul is trying to see if Philemon is big enough to receive somebody he's been angry with. You know, you've, I've said before, you could be big, but you let little get a hold of you. And this is a test. Because most times, God will test you with people. See what you're going to do with them. Um, Onesimus is coming. Your Onesimus, my Onesimus, he's coming to all of us. Somebody it's, That's somebody you think you've got a right to be angry with. Somebody that's done you wrong. We all have them in our life. And God just hangs around and sees what you, and sees what we're going to do about these people. God, that's a that's a measure and a, a test to see how much you've grown uh, or developed, or to see if you're still petty and small. Are you big enough to be in the ring that God's got you in, or that you want God to put you in? God wants to see if we've learned anything at all from what we've been taught. Onesim Onesimus has got to come. Um, there's got to be one in your life. There is one. It, it might have been called by a different name. But uh, can you receive somebody that you used to de define in one light and but now in another light like, like God sees them? Paul saying he, he was useless to you before, but I just wonder if you'll give him a, the same thing you need, mercy and a chance to change. And you know, sometimes you can't reach your full potential with and destiny with people who limit you like they met you. And I've said it so many times, I guess it's not necessary to say it, but I'm going to tell you. Uh, when I first started out, me and Brother Jack Kelly was on the piano bench at, at Burn Avenue and then at Huntsville. And um, and people want to, to hold you where they met you. They, they you was that way when they met you and they was this way when they met you and you, you're supposed to stay the same. But it doesn't happen that way. Uh, people that judge you by one season in your life, you can't get your destiny because people are in love with your history. And, and as I said before in another video, people from my now wouldn't recognize my then. And people from my then wouldn't recognize my now. Uh, people from my high school uh, wouldn't recognize because I didn't know nothing about the ways of the Lord. So they wouldn't recognize this Dale. They remember that one. Even Jesus had problems. They said, uh, isn't that the carpenter's son? They wanted to hold him to the way they met him and to the way they uh, thought they knew him. Some people will say, you forgot where you come from. 
and it's not so much that as you <laughs> wish they would forget those you know those things and that, those standards by which they hold you uh and i want you to know that that not all of these ideas are original to me i heard a man preach on this and it and it really did me good um uh, he wasn't a man of our faith but um like i heard like i heard and i've said before the truth is the truth if it comes out of the mouth of a baboon uh, and I, I i felt like this was the truth there's there's no way that philemon would have would have uh, received onesimus on his own without paul's letter and help And, and I know I used to go with my daddy, play golf, and they had a little expression that said, it's not how you drive, it's how you arrive. And I want you to understand it's not, and it doesn't matter where you started it. What matters is where you finish. And uh, so I, I hope you enjoyed that little love letter. Um, I really got a lot out of it myself, and I, my hopes was that I could get it to you like it, registered and and help me so i've enjoyed getting this to you today i really care about you i really do deeply and uh i hope that the lord will bless you if you need um uh, i'm gonna give you my phone number if you need me my phone number is two five six five zero eight forty four ten and if i can't get back to you right away i sure will make a a great attempt to get back to you when i can so um uh, until next time that we get a chance to do this, may God bless you.